Good morning and welcome to the Liverpool Bid Annual Showcase for 2020. I'm Bill Addy, I'm the Chief Executive of Liverpool Bid Company. I want to thank all of you for attending, for joining us this morning. And I also want to say a big thank you to MSP for sponsoring the event and hosting us here in the live studios in the north of Liverpool. This morning is an opportunity for you to hear what we've been up to during this last year. And Liverpool Bid Company has been working in Liverpool now for 16 years. But it's fair to say that the last 12 months were probably the most challenging for all of us. When our businesses closed their doors, as we figured out how to switch the di to digital meetings, as we consoled each other, as we shifted into a new way of working, at the bid, we took a moment to reflect, but that moment was not a very long moment because we needed to move into action quickly. And what would we need to do for a city center that was closed? And if you were working from home, how could we make sure we were still providing something of benefit and of value to our levy payers? It became clear to us very quickly, very rapidly, that the core role we have in bringing businesses together, in being the voice and platform for businesses in Liverpool, those core roles at the centre of our business would be more important than ever. And so in those few dark and very uncertain months, we developed a digital network for businesses sharing both insight and experience. We gathered concerns and fears from our levy payers and we passed them straight through to those in government, locally, nationally and internationally. And in some very memorable moments, we gave our levy payers a platform in the national media, helping them speak directly to government about what they needed for their businesses to survive. And once support began to come, then we've helped businesses access it. We've held those regular visitor economy panels with Marketing Liverpool, with hundreds of interested people tuning in to hear about the latest work in hospitality, in culture or in commerce. And when we began to plan the reopening last summer, it was through one of those channels that the businesses on Bowl Street suggested how useful it would be if they could have better service for their customers outside. OK, we said, let's see how that could work. And we talked to Liverpool City Council through Culture Liverpool and the Liverpool Without Walls initiative began. We've had daily calls with both government, our levy payers, helping to manage the process, helping to hear the, and voice their concerns in these uncertain times. And as the city centre began to open up again, we had a new data analysis tool to show the impact and we were able to give our levy payers an insight into both the recovery and how their customers were using the city centre differently. But the most important thing that we learned in 2020 was something that we'd secretly suspected for a long time. When Liverpool businesses work together, there's no stopping them. And we've had politicians and journalists looking at how Liverpool was bouncing back and saying, you know, this isn't happening any, everywhere in this country. So our shared way of working, of collaborating and supporting our levy payers, of leading and providing them with a conduit to power is going to be at the heart of Liverpool Bid Company, upgrading and investing in Liverpool City Centre, making sure it's a place to do business, making sure that it's a place to do business is vital for all of us. And we will always be at the forefront of improving the city centre, making it a world leading destination. But I want to now turn to our chairs, the chairs of the Liverpool Bid Company, of our retail and leisure bid, and also our commercial bid, to talk to them about the work that they lead on through the boards that each one of them have the, the privilege to lead. So if I can turn to Tony first. Tony, you're the chair of the Liverpool Bid Company. But can you just explain that role? What, the Bid Company has been in existence now, we know, for 16 years. But what does, what does the role of the chair actually involve? Thanks, Bill. The, the role of the chair is to make sure the Liverpool Bid Company delivers uh, what it says. That's improving the environment for everyone, in the, uh, for all the levy payers. So the, the way we operate is that we have advisory boards with the retail and leisure and the commercial business areas 
and they report into the board. And the main purpose of the Liverpool Bid Company is to ensure that the money of the, collected from the levy payers is spent on improving the environment, ensuring that the city is safe and secure, and providing marketing and animation for the city. And the key role for, for the bid boards is to provide that governance and oversight, isn't it, to ensure levy payers' money is spent in the way that the levy payers want it to be spent? That, that is our sole purpose, is to ensure that it, it's, it's a, a really great job because actually we've, we've got the money and it, our duty is to spend this on improving our city. And I'm very passionate about doing that. I've worked in the city for 40 years. And I think improving the environment in which we work and making sure it's clean and safe is absolutely vital to both people working in the business areas and in the retail and leisure areas. So that's our sole purpose, is to make sure that happens. I think we're fortunate in Liverpool in that we only have one bid company which keeps the, the administration costs at a low level and ensures that the, the levy payers' money is spent properly on doing exactly what it's meant to do, which is spending it on the environment and improving the whole area of Liverpool for people to live and work in. And Liverpool Bid Company, we know, is a not-for-profit company. So as a not-for-profit company, that means exactly that, doesn't it, Tony, that the Liverpool Bid Company doesn't make profits. All the money that comes in, as you say, is spent at the direction of those boards. That's correct, and all, all the members of my board are volunteers. That there's no payment to anybody, and we, we do it because we're passionate about it, making sure the city is a great place to live and work, and that's our, our role. And a phrase that we often use is about uh, making an environment for business. You know, the very title that we have is a business improvement district. So what do you see as being the significance of how we make business environments uh, the, right business, uh, the right environment for those businesses? I think, again, it comes down to making sure that it's a great place to, to visit, uh, to live and work. We, we've spent a lot of money on things like culture. Uh, we spend money on cleaning. We spend money on the police. We have our own police, police officers who patrol the streets and make sure that uh, we're looking after what's going on in the city centre. Again, the cleaning team are all over the city and, and are there to assist the levy payers. So if the levy payers ask for an area to be clean, we make sure that's done. And that has improved the whole environment in the city. Uh, and that's the key role of, of, a, of a bid company. So, in fact, from, from that role, you just talk about culture. Um, and I'm going to come on to, to speak to Julie, who's chair of uh, the, the commercial district bid, about some of the direct roles we have in culture. But uh, culture is very important. But culture, business culture is also vital, isn't it? Uh, in creating the right environment. Yes, I think it is. We've got to make sure that businesses work together and are able to uh, in, in the last 12 months, of course, what the bid company has been doing is making sure that um, all the, the levy payers and their businesses have access to the funding that's been available from government. And I have to say that I think the team's done a fantastic job digitally making sure that all the levy payers are aware of every grant that's available. And I've had a number of people talk to me about that and say how pleased they are that that, that function has been so well performed by the bid company. Uh, if a levy payer comes to you with a particular question about how the, the bid is operating, what was your response to that? Is really come and talk in, in more detail. I, th I think that's right. I mean, you can p pick up, there's so much stuff out there online that you can look at on our website, but certainly it's very easy to come and talk to the team, um, particularly if it's in areas of policing, our police officers are out and about. We've got a Sean Holland, our COO, who's always on the streets looking after people and talking to the levy payers. Uh, so the whole team is very actively involved in looking after what the levy payers want and meeting them as regular as they need to. Thanks, Tony. If I could um, turn to Julie. Julie, you're chair of the commercial district. Um, for, we, we know about the, the, the well-publicised impact on pubs and restaurants and hotels, but professional services, which is at the core of the commercial district, uh, and very much part of your DNA is that professional services organisation that, that you lead as well. It's been a very difficult year for that. We know in the commercial district itself, uh, people aren't coming back uh, in any number at this moment in time. But what would you think been the highlight of the past year? Thanks, Bill. Um, the highlight of the past year has been the, the collaboration and the innovation of business and partnership and how we've work together and communicated all them key messages to people and um, we moved online quite quickly and got their messages out and we've signposted businesses to grants and loans and it's actually made a difference as to whether they've been able to survive um, you know they wouldn't have survived if they hadn't have had access to some of these loans and grants and um, it would also be remiss of me now if I, if I didn't thank the bid team because they worked so hard over the last 12 months 
um, to make sure that their messages are communicated to people and they help them businesses. And that is our main aim, to help them businesses survive. And also, I mean, I can't just say one highlight. There's so many. We've, we've been able to continue art in the city. We've helped the biennial, uh, worked with the biennial to get um, the, you know, that through in, in 2020 and exchange flags as um, a big um, art piece in exchange flags. And then we've got the Liverpool plinth as well on St Nick's Church. Um, the Bid Police and uh, the Bid Street Rangers making sure that everywhere is clean and safe. You know, one of the biggest things over the last 12 months is, is that people will only come back into the city if they feel that it's clean and safe because of COVID, understandably. And we've worked really hard to be able to do that. And that's another great highlight. And the other one is Liverpool without walls. You know, we've, we've seen the city open up this week um, and our hospitality venues have been helped by Liverpool without walls. Um, and we've been able to get people working, um, sitting on the streets, having their teas and coffees and, and a couple of drinks in the streets. And I think, you know, hopefully that means that we're going to have um, a fantastic summer and be able to open up safely for people to come into the city. The commercial district bid is coming towards the end of its second term. So it's actually been in place now since 2011. Uh, I know the commercial district has transformed, but particularly I'm thinking about how, Julian, in, under your leadership, the commercial district has better connected businesses together and given a better identity to that core area in the city centre. Well, I think it's over the last 12 months, it's been very different because a lot of people, a lot of businesses have had to people going to work from home um, and I think all the importance of the bid is to work together and to have that mixed economy and everybody putting all their ideas the knowledge and expertise together to make sure that we can survive this and and come out better the other side and I think it's going to be really important the next six to twelve months for us to get ideas from people and and to work on strategies of getting businesses back and um, working into, in the city, especially in the commercial district, because we've got a lot of people still working from home. So there'll be hybrid work and people getting back into their offices gradually, but safely. And I think it's, it's our job to be able to support that. Julie, a lot of people tell me, and you read uh, that it's the end of the office uh, as we know it because of COVID, people have found the flexible working, working from home, being more practical. What, what's your view on, on that? I would say there's definitely not the end of the office. Um, you know, we, I've got 100 staff at Moorcroft Solicitors and we've got people working from home, but we've also got people working in the office who are still continuing to go to court and, and things like that. We've got professional services, um, estate agents, everybody going back into the office. I do think that the offices will work differently. I think it will um, we'll have extended working hours and we'll have more flexible working, agile working. But I think there's definitely still a place for the office. And in fact, I go so far as to say it's more important for us now to be working more 24 seven in the offices and having facilities available 24 seven for people to go in and work. And I think that will extend to the retail and leisure district as well, because you know, if people are going and working different hours in the offices, then that will also feed into the retail and leisure district. And of course, it's important in the commercial district, isn't it, the mixed use economy. We know a lot of our businesses uh, are not in those professional services, but they are in the support services. And the, the transformation of Castle Street over the last 10 years has really shown how, how it is a mixed use economy. And in fact, the work that we uh, within the bid, Julie, is, is trans enabled Castle Street to, to, to be that, that really that key place. That, that It's a destination now for tourists, visitors, locals alike, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, the work that, you know, we've, Liverpool Bids have worked with other stakeholders in the city and without it, without us all working together, we wouldn't have been able to achieve it. But it's so important for them businesses, as I say, to be able to survive and, and to be able to get through. But I think that, you know, there's still more to do. Um, we've got fantastic work that we've done in Castle Street and Bowl Street, but there are lots of other streets in, in the commercial district and the retail and leisure district. And, you know, beyond that, we can, we can help. And we've got these fantastic ideas and, and we've been able to facilitate getting them in place so that these businesses can continue and we can support people coming and visiting the city, working in the city, living in the city and enjoying going into the city every day.
Yeah. If I could turn to you, Janina, as chair of our retail and leisure bid, we know 2020, it's much publicised, isn't it? We know yesterday, thankful, oh, sorry, on Monday, thankfully, retail was able to open up again and people were able to go into shops. But it's been a very, very difficult year, hasn't it, for, for retail? How has it been from your own perspective? Obviously, you, you manage one of the key retail destinations in the centre. Um, but how has that been how for your retailers? Um, it's, it's been a challenging year. I mean, it was a challenge. It's been challenging lead up to that year anyway, um, in a retail perspective, because there just has been various impacts in terms of the merging and the blurring of online sales into bricks and mortar and the, the added cost of having bricks and mortar in terms of rates, etc. Um, from, from my perspective at Metquarter, we've, we've had a, um, an interesting year where we, we actually ended in a really strong position. We've had the addition of LMA um, taking 51,000 square foot and you know, we're in a position where we, in six weeks time we're going to open our new food hall of 12,000 square foot. So it's given us opportunity to look at mixed use space and I think that's, a, it's a real, that's an opportunity for the city generally is to look at how people live, how people exist, as, as Julie said about people coming into the city, living in the city, working longer hours in the city, having more flexible. There's, there's a lot of opportunities with this year that I think it's presented that we need to capitalise on. Um, and I think the bid's been instrumental in, in bringing the key stakeholders together to make sure that we can communicate and see those opportunities and turn those opportunities into kind of reality very quickly. Um, you mentioned mobilisation um, in your initial comments. And I think you, as a bid, we, we mobilised so quickly at a time when people were kind of lost. It was a completely new situation for all of us, working from home, with children off school, it's really stressful. Um, and what the, the bid did was, was bring people together in a very quick and easy format and daily Zooms, operations, and a real mix of people from Mark Ashton at Merseyside Health, in terms of the council, in terms of culture, um, and just actually help people's problems, da daily problems where you, you perhaps don't know to go to signpost, you're working remotely, you haven't all got the IT that supports you. It just, it just brought people together and it was reassuring. It, was, it gave people comfort. And the fact that we've been able to build on that, you know, all our, our executive board, our commercial board, our retail leisure board, they're happening monthly. Um, it's an hour. People can dip in and out. They can, they can jump online really quickly. And I think it's helped, it's really helped bring people together. Um, and that's something we need to capitalise on going forward. I know one of the key drivers that you wanted us to, to deliver for you within the retail and leisure bid was data. Um, I know we've, we've delivered footfall data for, for many, many years, but perhaps often that's just been something that people have looked at and not used. But you were, for you, it was a key driver for us to get that data on spend, on footfall, but not footfall on a weekly basis, footfall on an hourly basis now that you, you can have access to. And we've looked at ways of transforming that. So how valuable do you think that, that work of data is for you uh, who manage a lot of retailers and for retailers in particular, who are particularly looking at what's the data driving the people to their shop? I think, you know, I appreciate that I've been probably putting pressure on the data, but that, that comes from our levy payers, my own retailers, my own tenants who are desperate for data. They're under a lot of pressure. They're under a lot of pressure to understand how they perform against all the out, well, retail parks, how they perform against online, how they perform against their region nationally. And we have got so many great things happening in Liverpool that can also affect data. So if Liverpool play at home or if Everton play at home for that matter, you know, it can really have an impact on footfall. But footfall is just one aspect and footfall um, is an indication. But it, it, there's so many other factors that come into play. Um, what you've been able to do in, with, with the team that sits behind you that have been working, as the, as the guys have said, so hard about doing the day job as well, adapting to a pandemic is that we've bought occupancy rates, we've bought um, cultural events, we've bought sporting events, we've bought sales data, we've, we've looked at a whole picture and we've managed to engage with businesses that would never have ever shared data before. That data means so much to me because I can feed it back to our client, I can feed it back to our investors. And even to this Monday when we've, we've, you know, we've relaunched and we've reopened, to be able to compare lockdown lifting on the 12th versus the lockdown lifting back in the middle of June, is, is, is really instrumental in being able to say, well, yes, there's an extra 40,000 people in the city that day versus the same day in June. That is information that's hot off the press that comes actually direct to our mobile phones. Whether you're the manager of M&S, you're manager of Lily Bazaar, you've got that data, you can, you can talk to people. And then you start talking, you start engaging and you start having conversations with people. 
via the app, by, by a phone, by people, you know, I can go down and talk to my tenants straight away and say, well, do you know what? It is busier today and, it, you know, it's okay because there's a lot more people in the city and this is the reason why. And do you want to sign up to the app if you haven't got it? It gives us so many different reasons and it keeps coming back to this engagement. The strategic voice that BID have been able to provide over the last year, both in terms of its levy payers, the wider, the wider region, but in terms of linking in with the council and nationally is invaluable. We've become best practice bid for the whole of the country. And that is where we need to kind of drive that message forward as we expand in the future. Thanks, thanks on that point. And just on that point uh, around data, if anybody is a data nerd that's watching us, and actually it's fascinating to watch the data, we, ca we can, um, well, you can access uh, on the bid website uh, the daily data that's updated at 10 o'clock, um, the 10 o'clock in the morning from the previous day's data. Um, if you really want to know, we can actually provide some uh, links into our live data that's updated every 15 minutes. But it is fascinating to see. And particularly, uh, I, I know that, that in the future, people will look back and, and start writing doctoral theses on uh, how city centres responded to COVID and how the how footfall changed because of what external uh, impacts were put upon them. But I can tell you that uh, on Monday, our footfall was 168% higher than it was the previous week. Well, that's not a surprise, is it? But we were almost back up to the, the 2019 levels at 198,000 uh, footfall through the city centre on, on Monday alone. So it's great, just fascinating to see that. But it also that the bid is that, that you lead in retail and leisure provides operational support. And this year has been challenging, has it, on our operational support? Yeah, it's been challenging, both both in terms of lockdown and actually reopening. Um, the operational support we get from BID, both in terms of Sean and his team, the street cleansing, the, the ability to adapt and be dynamic, um, I think is really key. And that goes across all members of the team, whether it's from a marketing animation perspective. But also if we've got an issue that we just need some advice from a, um, one of the members of the BID police, or if it's a case that we've got, you know, the nighttime economy happens, the daytime economy happens, we might have a spillage outside the building and we need some support on that. Bid levy payers are able to, to access that information really quickly um, and adapt. I think also feed in issues that might become challenges that we then need to adapt in the future. So with the daily Zooms or the kind of contact we can have, we can bring people together who can exasperate problems rather than um, compound them, which I think is really important. And we know about high street challenges. You, you mentioned that in your introduction. Uh, Liverpool has lost a number of big key brands uh, of retailers, but also getting new retailers coming in. Is that because of the way that people perceive Liverpool now as a city that uh, does work together, as a city that is welcoming and a city that really is a good place to bring and invest a business? Well, Liverpool people are very passionate. Um, they love supporting their city. Um, they, want, they want their city to do well. I think with every kind of challenge that we face, and yes, they're, they're, we are going to lose some brands from our high street, we've already lost some brands from our high street. Those brands were in, were in um, trouble before the pandemic. The pandemic's maybe compounded the problem, um, but it's an also an opportunity. It's an opportunity, what we've seen with independence particularly, is their ability to adapt and be much more dynamic and actually to be able to kind of get onto websites, get onto apps, to look at different payment methods, to really adapt their businesses, be it takeaway, deliveries, and I think Liverpool is kind of is a, is a hub for that kind of activity where people want to support local businesses. And I think it gives people opportunities and with everything, um, you know, there's, there's flexibility out there. I think, you know, we're a great city. We've got so much from a cultural, from a heritage perspective, but we've got this passion. Um, and I, we see that from our levy payers and, and from the bid team, particularly that in driving things forward. And we know retail and leisure bid still has another two years left of its term. So uh, you are in place until 2023 or we are in place until 2023 with retail and leisure. We're coming towards the end of that fourth term uh, for the retail and leisure bid, which grew out of the city central bid uh, is one of the oldest business improvement districts in the UK. Um, what are your plans for the next two years? What do you want us as the, as the executive team who deliver on your behalf? What do you really want us to do over the next two years? Well, I think the last year has been the kind of the benchmark of what we need to sort of progress and, um, and move forward on. I, th I think we've done such a great job um, in bringing the data together that we talked about, bringing people together. And that gives us an opportunity for the next two years to really drive that engagement, to speak to our levy payers about what it is that is the key issues. We, we, need to, we need to operate at a tactical level as well as strategic level. 
but I think there's an opportunity in terms of Christmas, in terms of our nation, bringing, bringing big players together that aren't necessarily always part of the bid, but the key stakeholders within the city. So we need to make sure we drive that. We need to keep on with the data. The data is absolutely vital for everything that we do. It informs every single business within, within the area. So I think our message is that we want to, the next two years in one respect seem a long way away, but actually it's gonna go really quickly. We need to look at how we can form um, and, and grow the relationships we've got with our commercial partners. Um, and as the bid grows across the city, how we can all work together. Yeah, and uh, we know before uh, COVID stuck that COVID hit us back in um, January of 2020, we were actually working on plans to bring uh, the Christmas lights uh, that we delivered in 2019, the, the light tunnel, the, the, the interactive light trees in Williamson Square and bringing a bigger uh, bonanza for Christmas coming back. So we know that that is a very the key part of business, isn't it? That, that golden quarter, the Q4, but particularly those six to eight weeks over Christmas. So we're looking forward this year to delivering bigger and better in, in terms of Christmas to bring people back in, hopefully safely, hopefully securely. Well, I think the feedback over the last two years, even with the challenges that last Christmas presented in terms of sourcing and, um, and funding, um, but people have been really impressed with the Christmas lights. People want to come into a city and for it to feel Christmassy, whether that's, whether that's a ginormous tree or a light tunnel or actually just kind of the, the other things that sit around that in terms of safety and cleansing. Um, I think it's a real opportunity for us to work together. And I think for us as stakeholders to work together and see how we can um, share best practice, share costs share, and share efficiencies going forward. And we mentioned earlier, in fact, that Liverpool is a little unique in the way that we deliver our bids because uh, the two bids work together through one company. Um, how do you find that from Retail and Leisure, having commercial district alongside? Well, I think it works really well. I mean, I said to Julie before, it'd be great that we can actually go out for a coffee soon. I'm looking forward to that point rather than it all being virtual. Um, I think it's an opportunity because we've got so many different players with on both boards. Um, the boards are slightly different in terms of obviously um, the interaction that we have, but I see it as an opportunity for us to keep growing and working together um, with Natalie within the um, F&B uh, food and beverage industry and, and with the, the Playhouse and the theatres all coming together. We can keep expanding it. Um, and I think it, it just breaks down barriers to be able to work really easily with each other. Thanks. Uh, and Tony, just coming back to you, from a governance perspective, you chair Liverpool Bid Company. We, we deliver the two bids on behalf uh, of the, the bid levy payers. What would you say to any levy payer that's watching today who's thinking, well, I'd like to get involved in, in Liverpool Bid Company? Well, I think the answer is please, please contact us and we're very happy to get people involved. I mean, within the, both the advisory boards, anybody's welcome to try and join the, the team. Um, they're all welcome. And on our board, we, we do have a selection process. We do include other people. We, in, we invite Liverpool One to join us because we think it's vital that Liverpool One connects up with both of our, our area boards. Uh, and we have a number of other people on the board who can give us advice and assistance. So, but as a city, we must work together. But if levy payers want to get involved in our boards, we're delighted to, to meet and welcome them. And they should contact Bill and have a chat with him. And I'm sure we can uh, make sure they're involved in the city. Uh, just to say for you as levy payers, uh, you have the assurance that Liverpool Bid Company is now an accredited bid, uh, has complied with the industry standards as established by the Bid Foundation uh, through the Institute of Place Management. So all of our bid governance is clearly transparent and, and on our website, you can access all of that and, and you would be more than welcome to, to come and play a part in, in as levy payers delivering uh, the bid programmes that both bids uh, deliver. Uh, we mentioned about ballots. We mentioned the fact that retail and leisure uh, bid has another two ter another two years left in its term. But commercial district um, is coming to the end of its second term. Uh, two successful terms. It's coming to the end of that second term within, uh, actually within two months now, the 31st of May, it will come to the end. And we also know that uh, business improvement districts exist because they go to ballot. So in the same way that, that uh, we have local elections and mayoral elections and government elections, we also have uh, bid elections every five years. And that means that bids are democratically elected by the businesses who will pay into the, and pay into the levy. This year, we are moving to that, the launch of our new commercial district bid. And in a few moments, we want to just um, we'll show you our video and we'll, uh, I want Julie, who will be leading um, that bid ballot to, to take us forward into that, that new term. But uh, I just to say a big thank you to, to Tony and Janina for, for leading us. And uh, 
if uh, we can run the vi video and then we'll move into talking about the next stage in the evolution of the Liverpool Bid Company. Liverpool has transformed itself over 16 years and in those 16 years the Liverpool Bid Company has been at the centre of that, delivering through our retail and leisure bid and our commercial bid. The Liverpool Bid Company delivers services for our businesses, our levy payers. Those levy payers are the businesses that vote for us when we go to ballot. Those businesses pay us a small levy and that small levy we bring together to deliver the services on their behalf. Everything from Christmas lights to street theatre, everything from street cleaning to animation. And that's what bids do. And, and also we provide that business support, providing data and providing support. So bringing businesses together so they work for the benefit of all businesses and indeed all the stakeholders in the city. The new bid brings together the waterfront, the existing commercial district and the St George's Quarter. Liverpool's a fantastic city to come to visit but also to live in. Culture wise, there's something for everybody, it's, it's amazing. Having the bid right across the city centre, it is about getting things done. But a more joined up thinking makes complete sense. It means that we can promote the city much more effectively to our wider communities and also to tourists and visitors. The bids are very good at placemaking with various businesses around the commercial district, with the city council, with the wider regions. And the, the bid are very, very good in terms of collaboration, We're working with companies um, in and around the city that we perhaps wouldn't have had the opportunity had we not been part of the bid. You know, certainly so for, for Brookwood, for Liverpool, you know, it's a massive benefit to, to be working with the bid and the partners. The bid were absolutely instrumental in, in getting the, the external pavings, trees implemented in and around the, the buildings, which has had a massive difference. Here at ACC Liverpool, we welcome hundreds of thousands of business tourists into the city each year. Those business tourists go on to spend money in the city's shops, bars, restaurants and hotels, and actually often return as leisure tourists as well. So the benefit of being in the bid is that it will generate money for both a subvention fund, but it will also fund marketing to market Liverpool as a destination for business events. And that's vital to ensure that as a city, we can continue to bid successfully on both a national and an international scale. Good morning and thank you for joining us today. There are three words we use when talking about our vision for Liverpool. Resilience, making the city stronger. Community, working together to make us better connected. And placemaking, making Liverpool an attractive place to do business. This new expanded bid area allows us to invest £7 million in Liverpool city centre. That's about 1.3 million for each year of the bid term. It's part of Liverpool being able to recover and rebuild after the pandemic, with business at its heart. Liverpool Big Company has got a proven track record over the last 16 years, working to connect the city from the waterfront, through the city centre, up to St George's Quarter, and through the commercial district, means that more businesses will be part of our community. All cities are going to face challenges in the coming years. And for a city like Liverpool, we've already been able to rebuild before. And we know we can pull together, work together and do it again. Businesses in Liverpool can help to power the city's renaissance, creating an environment that supports everyone from the smallest independent to the largest multinational. Our pledges with this new expanded bid area are focusing on champion the individuality and character of our different neighbourhoods and districts while celebrating the whole of the city centre and making it a strong destination for businesses.
both to attract investment and to help the companies that are already here to thrive. It will include investment in our public and civic squares. We'll create a subvention fund to attract conferences and business events to the city and support destination marketing, which supports every industry from our tourism, hospitality and leisure sectors. To represent the business community both at home and abroad, with global forums like the Global Business District and MIPIM Property Conference. We'll make it easier to get around the city, improving pedestrian connectivity from the waterfront to Lime Street, creating more welcoming and impactful gateways to the city centre. We celebrate both our history and heritage while future-proofing the city and helping it to evolve. We'll make the city centre safe We'll keep it safe and secure with our BID police team and our BID street rangers. And of course, we'll look forward to Christmas and celebrating Christmas and being able to light up our city and attract invest investors and visitors and people who live and work in the city to enjoy. I'll introduce Bill now, who will give us some statistics and key dates and encourage you to vote yes for our new bid. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. So our culture and commerce bid ballot is launched this morning. Um, and the key points around it are that we will be beginning with a bid levy of 1.6%. That will be in line with what is now paid in the retail and leisure bid. But that will be for businesses with rateable value thresholds of 45,000 and above. Currently, we have a bid levy at levy raised at businesses with rateable values at 10,000, but we're now looking at increasing that rateable value threshold. So only businesses with a rateable value of 45,000 or above will pay the bid levy. So that means that there will be 456 bid levy payers uh, within the newly expanded area, as Julia said, as we expand from the commercial district uh, through an extension of the commercial district, including the whole of the waterfront and the St. George's Quarter. And that will bring in a total annual bid levy of 1.3 million. The key point of our new bid is that the notification of the ballot. So for existing levy payers, those who have been involved in our commercial district, you will know that you get a ballot a notice every year with, with a ballot uh, levy bill every year, but you will also at the ballot term, you will get the opportunity to vote for it. So that vote is uh, undertaken through a postal vote only. So the notification of that ballot, I mean, you will already have been receiving emails and phone calls giving you an indication that, that a ballot is on its way. But the, the notification of the ballot will be on the 29th of April when the formal notification of ballot goes out. And then there will be a postal ballot, postal ballot that goes out from the 13th of May through 28 days until the 10th of June. <coughs> and then on the 11th of June, there is the announcement of the ballot results. And we all hope that we will be able to start the new bid term on the 12th of June. So for us to be able to deliver against those pledges that we've committed, for us to be able to continue the work that we undertake within Liverpool Bid Company through our bids, through our retail and leisure and through our commercial district bid, for us to be able to continue to undertake that, we need levy payers to vote for us and we need levy payers to come out in force and vote for us. If you, if you believe and, and are wedded into the commitment to deliver a bid, for a new term in, in the city of Liverpool as we look to recover from COVID and as we look to move to take this city forward. So there's the key dates for you. But uh, as from today, this is our annual, uh, our annual showcase. Um, normally we'd be able to do it far more interactively. We'd be in a room together and you'd be asking us questions. Please do, if you have any questions, send them those questions around the ballot to our email address, which is ballot at liverpoolbidcompany.com. And then also more information around our business plan, which will be on our website and it's now live, liverpoolbidcompany.com ballot. Our business plans will be sent to the potential levy payers, 
But if you have any questions about that, or indeed you have any questions about the services that we are currently delivering, just a note for our retail and leisure levy payers, you will be getting your, the, the, the annual report comes out with the bid ballot, um, sorry, with the bid levy notice that will be coming out in June. Uh, we know that it has been a difficult year for uh, levy payers in terms of paying levy and uh, we are thankful for the many levy payers that have been able to, to continue uh, to, to pay that levy and, and um, allow us to deliver the services that we are able to do. But I would just say thank you for uh, attending this morning. Thank you for being part of our annual showcase. This will be uh, available online afterwards as indeed you will see uh, all of our comms messages will be turning towards vote yes and I know that uh, we are also coinciding with uh, one or two local elections um, that are also very vital for how we as a city uh, operate. But I would just say that thankfully the, the bid ballot will come after those local elections are determined. And so that will give you a, a short breathing space. But I would just say, uh, again, vote yes for the culture and commerce bid that will be bringing the commercial district, the waterfront and the St. George's Quarter together and will deliver those £7 million uh, of investment in, the, in our city centre and can keep uh, and continue the work of Liverpool Bid Company. So thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, we look forward to continuing the work that we uh, are able to do together and we look forward immensely to us returning to a physical presence in our city soon. Thank you and goodbye.